Hello, it's me. I'm back. Uh, there is still no background music. I know last time I said I had background music, and I did not actually turned out better that way. Uh, what I did have was some background sound effects that made it even noisier than it really is, and it is pretty noisy. I do realize I have not a great mic setup. Anyways, we will work with what we have and uh, expect that to improve in the future. So, uh, yeah, I went to B-Sides and uh, really hadn't had a chance to add to this uh, series, so I didn't uh, I didn't go through and uh, tell you what I recommended for Thursday of Black Hat, uh, which actually is tomorrow as of this recording, so uh, this would be uh, mostly his of historical interest uh, to my seven, all seven viewers. Thanks for tuning in. Anyways, um, so I will run through these real quick, though I might as well, so... By the way, actually, uh, day one um, at Black Hat, um, that session that I have been mentioning, the one with James Kettle, did in fact uh, come out. So he gave that presentation. And uh, I haven't seen it yet, but he, they also released the article on uh, Port Swigger, which I will uh, probably go into more detail the further on in this session here. Uh, but I, post, I pasted that link in the chat anyways, uh, so you should go and read that article. It is uh, very deep and very, very cool, very intense. Uh, but I have some notes on it. Maybe, we'll, maybe I'll get around to talking about that in this video. Back to uh, Black Hat, though. Um, let's see, what should one attend at Black Hat uh, on Thursday? Uh, well, let's see. Uh, I'm I actually... Uh, some of these, uh, I, as I have mentioned, will also be presented at DEF CON. Um, so if you're going to both of the cons, then it's always you know traditional to cross-reference those to find out which sessions that you could catch at either one uh, as best suits your conveniences. Um, I, I have actually gone through this a little bit, even though, as I said, I am not going to Black Hat this year, uh, but I will be at DEF CON. So what I picked out uh, from Thursday, actually, are a couple of things. Uh, one of them is uh, this presentation from uh, Katie Masouris. Uh, 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 sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, almost certainly. But uh, anyways, I recognize this name. I'm sure anybody that's been in the business for a while uh, would recognize this name. You know, she's been very active in uh, like uh, standards and uh, bug bounty stuff and just like community stuff. Highly active, big name, uh, big uh, fan of her work in the past. I could swear I've read either a book or just many papers from her as well. Anyways, this is called uh, Bug Bounty Evolution, not your grandson's uh, bug bounty. Um, it, you know, it, and it seems to be, uh, well, it's about, about bug bounty stuff. It's probably the most interesting thing happening tomorrow at the 1020 to 11 session. That's in the Mandalay Bay GH uh, ballroom on level two. And uh, so it's 40 minutes long, uh, you know, it's in the application and security track, obviously, and uh, I'll, I'll give you a little about it. Um, we are now in the what have we learned since 2010? Uh, is there an alternative solution for hackers who cur uh, currently get treated like disposable workers? Uh, it, actually, I wonder if she said gig economy. It does seem that uh, like bug bounty stuff, it, it's, maybe it's too early to, to write, but bug bounty stuff does seem to be headed the direction of uh, gig economy stuff. Um, and, and that could be ugly in the long term. Uh, final uh, paragraph here is, uh, this talk is for the dreamers, the wishers, the postmodern risk economists, the hackers of labor systems, the destroyers of status quos. Oh, that's cool. I've never seen status quos plural before. Now that I know it exists, I'm going to use it uh, to stop the status quos. Uh, this is not your grandson's bug bounty, which I think is quite a cool she, she flipped it around there. Anyways. <clears throat> Pardon me, that's 10.20 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, that's what I recommend for that track. Other things going on um, in there include, like, uh, here's a thing about uh, uh, CastGuard to mitigate type confusion in C++. Uh, don't trust the ASA Trojans uh, from Jacob Baines. Uh, Electrovolt about, I don't, uh, surface on Electron. Um, some Wi-Fi stuff from uh, Gabriel Campana and Nicholas loose uh, hacking and access control system. That might be of interest. <clears throat> now it's, uh, pardon me, it's interesting that they've categorized it under the cyber physical systems uh, track. Uh, that's also available virtual. So, and remember that a virtual, uh, no, that's a virtual business pass is free. But um, uh, all these testings are available at some point afterwards anyway. So you might want to track this down. 
<clears throat> pardon me again, uh, also you may find that some of these, uh, especially if they're fairly close to the metal or whatever, um, may also show up at DEF CON as well. Here's some uh, Mac OS uh, security la uh, layers with a single vulnerability. Um, uh, uh, use after free vulnerabilities and dedicated uh, cache. Uh, that could be interesting, actually, if you're deep in the code stuff. <clears throat> Pardon me. And uh, simulating side channel leakage uh, from a researcher whose name I won't try to pronounce. I'm sorry. Um, those are other competing ones. But again, I'm going to recommend for the uh, 1020 to 11, I'm going to recommend this. Kate Masuris, um, Bug Bounty, Evolution, Not Your Grandsons, Bug Bounty. Uh, another thing I saw that was uh, interesting next was at the 1.30 to 2 um, time frame. This is a presentation from uh, several PhD students and an associate professor from Northwestern University. Um, cautious, a new exploitation method, exclamation point. No pipe, but uh, as nasty as dirty pipe, and uh, they um, you know, bring up, of course, Dirty Pipe CVE 2022-0847, remember from last year, <clears throat> and uh, still actually has legs in it. This is a Linux kernel uh, um, uh, vulnerability involving uh, system pipes. So kind of interesting stuff, and I thought it looked uh, probably like the most promising session in that time frame. Uh, so again, that's 1.30 to 2.10. And uh, it's uh, three, uh, three researchers from Northwestern University. I've always seen good work coming out of there in the cyberspace field. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, also, next I saw uh, coming up tomorrow at 2.30 to 3 p.m., another way to talk with browser, exploiting Chrome at the network layer. This caught my interest. Of course, we're all interested in exploiting uh, Chrome. This is from uh, Rong Jian from um, 360 Vulnerability Research Institute. And um, let's see, there was a part that caught my attention. In this presentation, we will show how we discovered several bugs in the Chrome network stack and exploited them to compromise the renderer process and escape the Chrome sandbox. Uh, we will discuss the design problems of resource fetching and caching and what are the transport layer uh, protocols embedded in Chrome. We illustrate how server-side responses can affect browser behavior, which result in security bugs, and they detail the exploit strategy of these bugs, uh, which they apparently use to win the Chrome category in the Tianfu, Tianfu Cup uh, 2021 Cybersecurity Contest. So that's pre-vetted materials. I'm actually going to paste that in the chat. Oh, snap. I forgot to paste the other two. Well, you can find all of them over here on the... Uh, I'll paste that link in the chat anyways. Uh, on all of the Thursday briefings uh, for Black Hat. So in between all of these sessions, you see you get about 20 minutes to do it. Whatever, do your thing. Grab a hot dog or something. So uh, anyways, 3.20 p.m. is the, uh, 3.20 to 4 is the uh, Black, uh, Black Hat USA knock report, which I told you is really cool. And uh, you should go just practically, in my opinion, really has broad appeal across all of the sectors of our uh, of our industry, um, you know, because <laughs> they have to, it really involves a whole stack of security technology, right? Um, uh, actually, I should read this. Um, <clears throat> Back with another year of soul-crushing statistics, the Black Hat Knock team will be sharing all of the data that keeps us equally puzzled and entertained year after year. I, I just don't even want to ruin it for you. So uh, um, I think... Is it, uh, it might be either this or the DEF CON network, either, uh, maybe both of them combined. You could consider all of Conservative uh, Security Week in Vegas to be possibly the most hostile uh, network airspace uh, that you'll ever, you'll ever encounter. So imagine trying to secure that. Um, and, uh, so that's always a great time. Did I paste that in the chat? Because that definitely, you definitely want to hit that up. It's uh, really cool. 3.20 to 4 p.m. Uh, always very enlightening and amusing. Um, I also have 3.20 to 4 p.m. If you, I don't know, like maybe you just want to catch half of one or the other, or you don't want to see the knock report, uh, or you're going to the DEF CON knock report, uh, or they are still different. Anyways, there's an alternative uh, from um, a security researcher at DB App Security, um, Quan Jin, at 3.20 to 4 p.m. I'm going to stop saying Chinese names. Uh, the, the journey of hunting in the wild windows uh, LPE, uh, Local Privilege ex uh, Escalation, Zero Day. This again, 3.20 to 4 p.m. in the Lagoon KL 
uh, ballroom. Um, uh, let's see, this one just looked, uh, it just looks good to me. I mean, of course, anybody, you know, Windows is the target. Uh, unless you're doing server side and then of course it's going to be Linux but anyways it's you know one of the bigger targets and uh, so that's important LPE you know I mean you had me at uh, LPE really so go check this one out that's 320 to 4 and the link is in the chat for the YouTube replays um, actually I really just use Twitch uh, to record these so that I don't have to store it on my hard drive so on YouTube I'll put them in the comments of it doodly do underneath the video so <clears throat> pardon me so that's black hat i finally get to close all these black hat tabs you know what uh the f before we get to that before we close down black black hat completely um uh james kettle gave his presentation today uh, the first the first of it he'll be doing it at defcon as well uh so you can catch that i might as well link to it right now since it's coming up um and here it is uh, so if you're going to DEF CON, never fear, you will catch it right there. Uh, I think it's on Friday, uh, so it's not tomorrow, it's Friday. Um, anyways, uh, and an article uh, accompanies it. This is the article. You should dig into it right away. It's deep and it's fascinating. Uh, <clears throat> it's, you know, deep on HTTP desync and, you know, uh, content length, uh, transfer encoding confusion, you know, all the kind of mishaps uh, that are involved in that. And if you don't, well, you will uh, once you have read this article and, and or, well, really both. I suggest you start reading this article and then um, and then attend and or re and review his, his presentation um, until you have mastered this. Why? Because uh, this will, you will, I can guarantee you, I, I will eat my hat if in the coming year or two, you do not see a variety of attacks stem out of this research because this is really good stuff, by the way. And some of this is just uh, some of this is is really just the tip of the iceberg sort of thing. Uh, I will give you. I actually took some actually took some notes here uh, for taking. That's an index card. It's just white on the camera. Uh, I took some notes to make sure that I mentioned these things. Oh, uh, I mentioned at the top of this are. Um, uh, new and or updated uh, plugins for uh, for Burp. The um, uh, that you, you're probably already using them. Actually, I think one of these is new. At least I wasn't sure about whether I, I haven't been using it before. Uh, yeah, I think Turbo Intruder is new. So um, at least in support of this article, my perception is that in support of this article and this release, um, that these two components have been updated. Uh, so again, those are referenced in the article, so need, no need for me to post them there. But Turbo Intruder, of course, the uh, you know an extension of the true intruder that we all know and love from Burp uh, for fuzzing multiple parameters and shit like that. Uh, not necessarily even just fuzzing if you have an input list. Anyways, I get um, an HTTP request smuggler, which of course is meant to support HTTP request smuggling, which can be very complex and difficult to do by hand. Anyways. Uh, I also uh, noted, so, I mean, what you're going to catch in this article, um, at least what I took out of it, what is, I'm still only halfway through it, um, but some noteworthy things that I took already, just notes to myself as I was reading it. One, uh, reverse proxies, mishandling uh, sequential requests by uh, assuming uh, once a request, uh, once a series starts permitted that it stays permitted, which is really fascinating. I mean, of course, you know, this has been actually, if you look into other response splitting um, research, this always has been part of it. Uh, but I think it's interesting the way that he has really called it out here. I mean, it's always been a problem when you have something like a system, maybe that will take a parameter. It applies anytime where you have an input that you'll accept multiple times. And it's a question of whether or not the first one is validated or the second or both because almost any of those situations can be manipulated uh, to your advantage and more so when there are intermediary systems that have differing rule sets. That will all make sense when you read the article. Uh, so that was my first takeaway from it. Uh, the second takeaway uh, is that there is in here, he discovers a very clever technique. Uh, I think he's calling it pause, pause testing or something. So uh, a, a very 
a very clever technique for uh, determining whether or not the front end is still waiting for more uh, text, is still waiting for more data. In other words, that it has uh, mishandled the uh, content length transfer, uh, transfer encoding uh, headers. So anyways, he has a very clever, when you read it, you'll be like, ah, that's very funny. Uh, it was pretty cool. Um, uh, also, uh, there is a section in here on, here we go, H2.0 on Amazon. Uh, H2 point, it's just his, uh, it, it's his notation for this scenario, right? Um, so, and this is, uh, it's really interesting stuff. So read this stuff, you know, uh, this part, especially um, where he actually kind of hypothesizes a browser initiate browser let yes literally client side browser initiated http desync worm at which point my brain kind of exploded for a second and i had to catch my breath because uh i think this might be possible and it looks kind of insane but that's actually just uh, a part of his um that's really just a, a small part of his, uh, the outputs of his research. So what I'm saying is this is a sort of, you're looking at the tip of an iceberg here, maybe the tip of a couple of icebergs, and often this is the case. This is why, um, well, it's why actually I attend these sessions and why I track this sort of stuff, uh, and also why I've been adv advising you uh, from like a couple of weeks ago to, to be at this session. So I knew this was gonna be this, uh, or something really very much like it. Okay, so. Anyways, that's that. That was cool. Uh, do be at that. It, I pasted the links to the DEF CON version, which will be Friday. Strangely, this, it doesn't have the time in here. It's, it's 45 minutes long. Um, you'll notice like it doesn't have the time, and um, you will see right here, actually. So here, if you want to go to the DEF CON schedule, here it is in the chat, uh, DEF CON.org at the uh, DC30 schedule. And it does list them by track. Uh, this uh, goes down here like this, right? Um, so uh, it all this track starts on Friday because Thursday, of course, is traditional line con. That's when you wait in uh, in line for your badge. Um, but other people had noted that in that list uh, that they see the speakers list, uh, but not the time and day of speakers. Uh, so and. So we, we're not the first people to notice that, but they, uh, this person said uh, also they agree. So instead they have pointed us to uh, this, which I'm gonna give you this link right here. So go to info.defcon.org slash events. It's actually a much more convenient interface uh, to look at this, in my opinion. And it's got this cool countdown clock that says 23 hours to go. Uh, so uh, here's Thursday the 11th. You can click on each of these days up here. As I said, it didn't really start until Friday. That's when the villages open up and all that kind of stuff. There are a few things on uh, Thursday, of course, LineCon. Uh, you must attend LineCon. Um, I note at the top of this, it says not all contests are listed yet on here. So hopefully they'll have that resolved by the time you view this. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, and here you see at uh, 7 a.m. human registration opens. Uh, uh, so anyways, I don't know, myself, uh, I like to go later. I, it doesn't really matter. It's going to be about, um, well, it's usually not too bad, maybe 30 minutes to 45 minutes or something typically. Um, so do do that. Get your badge and stuff. There are a few things happening. Uh, now, mind you that all of these workshops, like Network Hacking 101, and I have been to some of these before. Some of them are pretty good. Um, these are all sold out by now, so unless you're one of the people who have already registered for one of those, those are not relevant to you. Um, some of the villages I, and such I notice are having virtual, virtual events, so you can check out the um, website for information on the virtual events where all of those are. Uh, they have links to all of them. Um, so aside of the workshops, there is uh, like some, uh, there's a lounge with I guess, music and stuff like that. Uh, there is, I noticed like there's uh, a crypto, uh, crypto village puzzle which sounds interesting, and I might look into that. You might look into that too. The Goldbug Crypto Privacy Village Puzzle uh, starts at noon in the Flamingo Vista Ballroom, uh, at the Flamingo in the Vista Ballroom. 
um, and that sort of thing. There are a few other minor things, uh, mostly uh, the training sessions. Uh, but so that's most of what you'll do on Thursday. There are some parties and stuff like that uh, at night. Uh, so if you get invited to any of those ones, really cool ones, then um, send me an invite. <laughs> um, and then things start proper on Friday. Uh, there were a few things that I had picked out. Let's see. Uh, I, well, I already mentioned, you know what, I think I will probably cut it there. I already mentioned uh, the James Kettle thing. So I think that's uh, 10 a.m. on Friday. And uh, then, I mean, it was just gobs and gobs and gobs of delicious. Um, I mean, just at a really high level, some of the ones that um, I was really looking forward to checking out. Uh, there's a policy village. Uh, always like that one. Um, uh, let's see the uh, the recon village, the future of collecting data uh, from the past. That's some OSINT stuff. I'm kind of like uh, you know a low key into OSINT um, uh, just because I, I find it to be of value, but not as like I wouldn't want to make it a you know like a, a full on specialization or anything like that. Um, oh, um, let's see, there's CTF that you can get, there's, uh, there's gobs of CTFs, there's Darknet, I think, starts uh, on Friday, um, they usually have, basically, it's like a CTF interactive uh, ARG, sort of everything, it's really cool. Uh, by the way, if you don't know, the Darknet Diaries is a, a podcast uh, that they run, and you should definitely, actually, where is that, okay. Uh, so yeah, definitely do check out uh, Darknet. I will put the paste the link in the chat. They have uh, it's a uh, in per what do they call it? in person massively multiplayer online role playing game. Oh, that's yeah. I mean that's a much better description of uh, the way I described it. Um, so anyways, do check that out. And uh, like I said, lots of other cool stuff will be happening on Friday. I really should pick out some stuff, but uh, I actually have to actually have to get ready for um, prep for uh, tomorrow and everything. Um, through, I did run through this a bit and I was like, oh man, what am I go, uh, gonna go to? Um, do, 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 do. Okay, opening remarks on the state of AI and security at the AI, um, at the AI village. Uh, you guys probably heard me already talk about machine learning and AI in cyber security, particularly I'm into adversarial machine learning, um, but other applications, particularly of AI, um, which I know this, these are separate Venn diagram, uh, both some Venn diagrams. Uh, Quantum Village opening ceremony? Wow, I feel like they're a little ahead of the curve, but we should be. Um, ooh, Friday 9.30 at uh, AI Village Automate Detection with Machine Learning. See, machine learning's at the AI Village. Don't get mad at me. Um, do, 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 oh, that's the OSINT thing. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you'll find that these presentations, they'll give them like a couple of times throughout the day or something. Uh, so, you know, if you need to shuffle your schedule around, usually not a big deal. Um, let's see, Hack the Planet CTF, I already mentioned that. Uh, uh, oh, Red Team Village uh, CTF qualifiers. You know what? The thing about the CTFs, uh, particularly the big ones, is I've, they just take up so much time that if you're going to do that, then, you know, um, you don't usually, I don't usually find I have time to go to the, many of the sessions. And I usually really enjoy the sessions uh, quite a bit. Um, actually, those are better. Those are actually better to see over here. Um, on this menu at the DC30 schedule link. I'll put that in the chat as well. So go there, that's actually an easier way to see, um, in, in my opinion, it's an easier way to see the, the speaker tracks because these were all the workshop, or workshop and village tracks uh, that I was talking about previously. I, I will say, oh God, there's like, I've always, as much as I love DEF CON, it's like, um, they're, you know, the way they organize all of the content. There's just so much of it though, but I mean, it's always been, it's always been so hectic. Um, so yeah, I mean, like you go to the parties link, it's, it's, it's really, <laughs> I mean, it's hackerly. Um, I mean, it's supposed to be, you know what? I take it back. I don't, don't change anything. 
you know what? This is probably why it, it hasn't ever changed. Yeah, don't change anything. I'm afraid to change anything. Just leave everything the way it is. Um, okay, cool. Well, that's it for me. Hope you enjoyed that, and I uh, hope you come back for the next one. Uh, I think what I'll probably do is after I get uh, the, the little uh, program, you know, the uh, convention program and the badge and crap like that, I'll come back and uh, maybe do a sesh uh, before Friday um, about, you know, initial impressions and what my thoughts would be going forward. So thanks a lot for tuning in, whoever the hell you are. And uh, as I always say, if you like it, tell your friends. And if you don't, tell your enemies. Uh, this is me signing off. Take care.